am going to share something with you. Uh, we do continuing ed here. Um, all massage therapists are required to do three whole days, 24 hours of continuing ed every two years. Now this is not usually a hardship for massage therapists because there's lots of fun stuff to take out there. So sometimes massage therapists will go learn a new thing like maternity massage or hot stone massage or some advanced like, uh, I don't know, muscle melting technique or whatever. Anyway, um, sometimes by the way, like I've taken continuing ed classes where I've just taken reflexology with a friend and we rub each other's feet and talk the whole time. But, um, so it can be, it can be kind of a fun time too. But, but anyway, but we offer here, this isn't a sales pitch, just to kind of explain. We offer here a continuing ed class called Muscle Anatomy Boot Camp because many therapists after two years have forgotten quite a bit of their anatomy. And it's a problem. And so they, they, for their continuing ed, they come take one of the courses they take is Muscular Anatomy Boot Camp. I'm going to share part of that course with you. Eventually, by the time you graduate, you will have taken this entire course with me, um, this continuing ed course, because it fits so well into the anatomy you're doing. Um, and it gives you a different way to look at, at muscles and things like that. So this is part of that course, but it's just going to cover the muscles we've done so far. Uh, but we will do all this. I want to say one other thing, and this goes out to everybody, but um, but for my people that are stressing about the test at the end of the program, the one test that is not open book, there are a lot of similarities to today's presentation and that test, meaning some of the very pictures in today's presentation or in that test. So I'm just, I'm not, like if you didn't hear me, you're still gonna be fine on the test, I'm gonna have you ready. But if you are somebody who's feeling stressed, this is something you should pay attention to today because it'll give you a good idea of some of the stuff that we're gonna ask you. Because on that test, some of the stuff we ask you, about 80% of the questions are just like, what's that muscle? And we show you a picture. Now there are harder questions, like where does that muscle go and what does it do and things like that, but a lot of it, the majority of that test is just, can you name that muscle? Because we don't want you walking out the door and not knowing where biceps brachii is. You know, like we just don't want to have graduates do that because people will laugh at you. So anyway, uh, so this muscular, muscular anatomy boot camp, we're going to use it as a review for stuff we've been doing so far. Please feel free to interrupt. I will be calling on you. Um, do not feel bad. This is not a test. We are just training together. You are in a safe space. You're in a safe space, as Ms. McDowell told us, and several of you told us this is a safe space. So we're just checking stuff out. Um, okay, so there are 640 muscles in the body, right? Now, we only focus on the main ones here. Yeah? Yeah! Um, but that's about, I think it's 101 muscles that we do in this class. It might be 103. It's roughly 100, right? Well, um, even if we only focus on the main ones, that's... That's, uh, these are some of the muscles, that's another slide of muscles uh, that you would have to look at, and that's an awful lot of muscles to remember, right? You shouldn't even be able to see them on the slide. Um, that's to make a point. <laughs> you can't do it all by memory. So, uh, this is supposed to be a little guy standing here, by the way. This is me, right? Um, this is a specific type of chart and what we did was we fed every single muscle in the human body into a computer. And what it did was it made words that come up more often bigger and words that come up less often smaller. So like you'll notice there's a flexor out there. It says flexor kind of in the middle of the guy's chest there. Do we see that? A nod from somebody? Okay, good. Or longus or brevis. It's because those words show up in about 40 muscles. And so if you know what if you know that flexors are generally found in front of the body, for example, because flexions normally happen in front of the body, that is a big help later when you're naming muscles. Or if you know that longus means long, and anytime, anytime there is a longus, if I say blah 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 water bell, water bottle longus, you know there's a water belt water bottle brevis. There is not a single body in, oh my God, maybe I need a coffee. There is not a single muscle in your body that's called brevis that doesn't have a longus. 
Just like my name would not be Tapscott Jr. unless there's a Tapscott Sr., which there isn't. So my name's not Tapscott Jr. So knowing little tricks, like when I told you guys the holocys and polysis thing, does anybody remember that? Yeah, Miss Estes, do you remember, do you remember what it means? Yes, holocys means a muscle going to your thumb, and it's helpful because there's eight. There are eight muscles here going to my thumb, and every last one of them has holocys in it. So when somebody's like, shows me a picture of a muscle going to a thumb, I'm like, well, that's holocys something already. I've already got half the answer. And if you're taking a multiple choice test at the end of the year, that little nugget of information can carry you very far. Polysis means going to the big toe. You see a little tendon going to a big toe. You know that muscle's name has got holocys in it. I mean, holocys in it. Polysis thumb, holocys big toe. Anyway, that's the point. And anything that's got digitorum in it is going to your digits. Anything that's got digity minimi going to it is going to your pinky or your little toe. So I mean, these are helpful things and I will explain those, but that's what we're going to kind of talk about first is how muscles are named. Hopefully that will help you in the rest of the course um, as well as review and then we will look at specific muscles too. Yay! Okay, so uh, muscles are usually named in Latin. You guys already know this. You already know this. Latin, which is why I made the Harry Potter joke, right? Because Latin always feels like levator scapula and things like that. So uh, that's very common. They are sometimes named by size. Can anybody think of a muscle named by size? Can anybody say a muscle named by size? Brevis. Well, that's actually link, although I guess I'd take that, yeah. Um, Magnus. Yeah, Magnus, <laughs> adductor Magnus, gluteus maximus, things like that. Um, shape. Some muscles are actually named by their shape. Anybody think of a muscle named by its shape? Trapezius. Did you say, wait, wait, Miss Sardo, did you say trapezius? Yeah. yeah. She's trapezius. right. Trapezius is named after a trapezoid. A lopsided, like a, a diamond, basically. Yes, and rhomboids is another good example. Rhomboids are, are a trapezoid, really. Very good examples, yes. Your deltoid, too. It's, it's named after delta, which is an upside-down triangle. Yeah, very good. Um, some muscles are named by the orientation of their fibers, which means the direction their fibers run. Anybody can think of an example of this? I haven't outlined it very well, so you may not be able to. Your rectus abdominis or your rectus femoris are called that because the muscle fiber fibers run up and down. Rectus running up and down. That's what it means. Your internal and external obliques. Oblique means diagonal. Oblique muscles are always running diagonal. So that kind of helps you with that kind of stuff. Some muscles um, are named by the number of their origins or the heads of the muscle. Can anybody think of a muscle that's named by the number of heads? Biceps. Biceps. Brachii. Yeah, or biceps uh, or triceps brachii, yes. Or, bi or biceps femoris. All that is two-headed muscles, yes. Um, some are named by the points of origin insertion. I can actually only think of one muscle like this, but you guys, have, we've talked about it before. It's a muscle in your neck in the front. And it's named by the location of its origins and insertions. Sternocleidomastoid. Thank you very much, Mr. Blygen. Sternocleidomastoid, yeah. Um, some muscles are named by their function. Um, anybody think of this? Like, by their action is what they mean. Yes, Miss, Miss uh, Osuriel. Miss Osuriel, yes. They were bigger cough muscles. They were, oh, the rotator cuff muscles, yeah! yeah I'm, I'm excited because right. I didn't think about that, but you're absolutely right. They are muscles that rotate your cuff and they're named by their function, yes. Um, or levator scapula, it elevates the scapula, right? Things like that. Uh, those are great, that was great, thank you. Um, and some muscles are named by location, like literally the area of the body they're in. You guys have kind of already given examples of this. Spinalis. Spinalis, that's a great one. Found on the spine, yeah. And biceps brachii is named by several of these things. Biceps, it's named by the number of heads. Brachii by the location. Yeah. 
it's in the arm. Cool. So these are just things we want you to keep in mind while you're learning muscles because it's very helpful because it's a language and after a while it starts to become fairly easy if you learn the language, right? Instead of just phrases. Okay. So I'm going to move through this pretty quickly because you guys already did this. Um, size. Um, oh, don't forget serratus means sawtooth. And we will get to the rest of the stuff. Rectus oblique and transverse. Yes, we talked about that. Okay. All right. So let me ask you some questions. If flexor muscles help me flex, what side of the body would I usually find them on? The front, the front of the body? Anterior side of the body. Including my forearm muscles, by the way. All of these forearm muscles here are named flexor something. There's, there's a load of them. But all of them, all my flexor muscles are right here in the front of my forearm because flexions happen in front. Yeah? So flexors tend to be in front of the body, which means extensors tend to be where? The back. So the back posterior here. Posterior to the body. Yeah, posterior. Thank you for using anatomical language. The posterior part of my forearm is all extensors. Extensor, carpi, blah, 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 extensor, what it, there's just loads of extensors back here. So that's very helpful kind of advice. Think about this. Where would I find abductors on the body or the hands or the feet? Lateral to the body? Ms. Suriel, I, I was not expecting a single person to get this answer, and you nailed it. Why do you say, you are right, by the way, why lateral, Ms. Suriel? Because of the class you gave us yesterday when we were repeating lateral, I think that speaks a lot to me, and that's why I say thank you for being a good teacher and just making us to um, learn all this stuff once and again and again. Oh, I, oh my God. Okay. Well, anyway, I, it's worth it. You just proved to me it's worth it. I'm going to keep doing it. So, yeah, it is. so this is just a simple abduction of my fingers, right? They're coming out to the side. Well, in order to pull my digiti minimi, by the way, this little finger, if there's a muscle going to it, it's called your digiti minimi. If it has to go out to the side, if it has to abduct, this is an abduction, where would I have to be to pull this finger out? I'd have to be on the side of my hand. I can't pull it from over here. Does that make sense? I've got to be on the side to pull it to the side. So guess what this muscle is called right here on the side of my hand? Abductor digiti minimi. And I swear I didn't memorize that. <laughs> Like, that's just something I know because I know that the abductor would have to be there. And I would know that my finger literally can't even do this unless something's pulling it out to the side. And I can actually feel it flexing when I do it now. It's a tiny muscle. But the point is, it's going to my little pinky, abductor digiti minimi. How else would you memorize stuff like that? It's just too many weird little things. But that's beautiful. Thank you, Ms. Suriel. So, abductors, where would they be found on your body? Yes. Miss McDowell, what do we call that, Miss McDowell? I mean, I love the sign language. And Miss Trotter. I don't want to be talking too much, um, but they're more manually, more towards the midline. Yeah, like your, like your adductor hip muscles, right? They're all between your legs, pulling your legs together. That's why they're called adductors. Very good. Cool. Um, awesome. Awesome. Where would levators have to be? Yeah, you're thinking levator scapula and you're 100% right. But the point is, wherever the levator is, it's got to be above the thing it's lifting. I can't lift, I can't, I can only pull, and I can only pull from up here. Which means depressors have to be inferior to whatever they're lifting. Yes, cool. Um, the only pronators and supinators I know are in your form. We'll learn them later. Um, Tensors, yeah, we'll learn about your tensor fascia a lot later. Sphincters, by the way, are circular muscles. You probably know this because of all the jokes and things like this, but your mouth muscle and your butt muscle are the same. I mean, they're different muscles, but they're the same type of muscles. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It's true. Anyway, um, but they're, they're circular muscles that are meant to cinch close so you can... 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Ms. Surreal. Uh, what about rotators? Rotators is a group of muscles working together to rotate. Yes. Yes. Because it's not one. It's not one. It's a group. I don't know if that's a good, but it's, it's a good example of them being described by their mechanical action, as you put. You, you, I think you said that, right? The, the shoulder, the rotator cuff muscles, three out of four of them actually do rotate the shoulder. So, so the, uh, the subscapularis medially rotates you, the teres minor, and anytime I say teres minor, you guys say, thank you, Mr. Blygen, infraspinatus laterally rotates. So three of those muscles do rotations. It's true that the uh, supraspinatus does not, but it's still thrown in that group. Yeah. All right. We already talked about numbers, a number of heads by tri or quad. You guys have already named the quads on the on the femur. The four heads on the femur, and seps means heads. Uh, and then very few muscles are named by their actual function. I'm not talking their action, but what they do. Like this muscle here is my masseter, and I use it for mastication. Mastication is to chew. You're all a bunch of masticators. All right. And sartorius, remember the diagonal muscle, the longest muscle in the body that runs across the leg? Well, it's actually called the sartorius, which means Taylor's muscle. Why, Tapscott, is it called Taylor's muscle? Just for fun, let's talk about it. I've got, let me set this down here. I've got, this is my sartorius for pretends. It grabs on right here and it actually comes across like this, right? It performs, by the way, three actions at once. It's unbelievable. Because it's pulling below my knee, it's going to cause my knee to bend like this. What do we call that? Flexion of the knee. Flexion of the knee. It's going to cause my hip to rotate out. What do we call that rotation? Laterally rotation. Lateral rotation of the hip. It's going to cause my hip to come up like this. What do we call that? It's in front, bending in front. Flexion of the hip. Yep, flexion of the hip, flexion of the knee, lateral rotation of the hip. It's how I sit cross-legged, like a tailor that would sit there and do sewing. I didn't name it. Sorry, I know that was anticlimactic, but the fact is, it's that's why it's called the tailor's muscle. It allows you to sit cross-legged like a tailor would to sit there and sew. That's how it got its name. Mr. Uh, Ibarra said happy sack. Yes, it is the hacky sack muscle, and that's exactly, it's exactly the kick you do on the inside. But it's not named the hacky sack muscle, it's named the Taylor's muscle, but he's exactly right. And I call it the hacky sack muscle, too. Um, I find it very interesting with Mr. Ibarra because there's lots of stuff that we teach separately and talk later and find out we're doing the same thing. And I'm like, and we went to school in different parts of the country and just, you know, it's kind of interesting to me. So that's like hacky sack is something we've never discussed, but we both talk about it that way. All right, okay, don't worry about this yet. Okay, so I would love for you guys to do some active practice with me. It might seem silly, but it really helps. I've done a little bit of this with you guys before, but there is something about, <laughs> I'm not trying to make this sound as funny as it's gonna sound. There is something about touching yourself that really helps with learning, and so, when we teach this class here to massage therapists, graduates, we have them go through some of these things where we say, hey, pectoralis major. Thank you, Ms. Trotter. Pectoralis major, just say it in your own head. Actually, move your mouth. Pectoralis major, right? And what's good about this is this is about the size of my pectoralis major. It's hitting my sternum, the first six ribs. It's going to kind of go over to my shoulder. This is kind of what it does, right? Pectoralis minor, right? On the coracoid process, hits ribs three, four, and five, right? Deltoid. We do this to remind you that there are three heads to the deltoid, right? We don't talk about it that way, but there's an anterior part, a middle part, and a posterior part. Yep, and they come down in a, a thing here. Deltoid, right? Trapezius. We realize that it's, this is just upper trapezius, right? 
serratus anterior. You are sawing under your arm. That's what you're doing. I know. It's ridiculous. I'm sorry. This is why we wait to the end of the first class so you can't leave. Okay. Two fingers. Biceps brachii and brachialis. I'm, <laughs> it's like, I need a fix. Um, so we're doing it because biceps is two heads, but also there's another muscle underneath here, the brachialis. So biceps brachii and brachialis. Just a good way to remember two muscles, but also two heads, right? In a way, three three heads if you want to, you know. But anyway, biceps brachii is a two-headed muscle, but there's also two muscles here. Brachialis underneath, okay? Triceps. Triceps, cool. Thank you all, by the way. You guys are so nice. All right. Moving right along. Okay. Point up. Supraspinatus. Infraspinatus. Double down. Terry's minor. <laughs> Subscapularis. It literally is under the scapula. When you reach under your lap partner's scapula, you grab, you're grabbing about 17 things. But one of the things you're grabbing is the subscapularis. And an extra nice tip. Okay. Thank you. Um, if I say infraspinatus, you say teres minor. If I say latissimus dorsi, you say teres major. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I already said all this, but this is just stuff to kind of remember. Extensors are found on the back of my forearm. Flexors are found on the front. Yeah. Um, when we get to legs later, you'll see that flexors are also found on the back of the legs, but and extensors are found on the front of the legs. But um, we already talked about this. Abductors are on the outside of the body. Adductors live on the inside of the body. Okay. Fun, fun, fun. Um, let's call on some people. Let's call on some people. Let's just take this. Miss McDowell. Miss, dear Miss McDowell. What muscle do you think this is? And believe me, you guys have never seen these pictures before. We might have to, to talk through it. Yeah. So talk to me. Um, is that the iliocostalis? So what is your logic to it being the iliocostalis? Well, I can see that it goes all the way down and touches the hip or the ilium bone. It's also touching those ribs, which are costalis, like costal, which is ribs. Um, but that kind of goes like up to the neck too. And I know it doesn't directly touch along the spine, but it kind of like curves out. So I think that's the one. I think I'm glad I called on you. So it's not, it's a, we think it's a spinal erector, erector spinae muscle, right? Almost for sure. She's saying it's not the spinalis, it's not close enough to the spine, it's not grabbed on the spinous processes. By the way, this reasoning that Miss McDowell just used is exactly how you take the test at the end of the year. Exactly. So, she then said, I mean, she didn't quite say this, but she then said it could be the longissimus or the iliocostalis. Both grab onto ribs. This one looks like it grabs onto all of them, which makes iliocostalis a good candidate. It grabs onto the ilium, which makes iliocostalis a good candidate. And the longissimus goes all the way up to the head. And this muscle does not. So Miss McDowell's original assumption of this being the iliocostalis would be 100% correct. That is the iliocostalis. Now, there are two values in what we're doing here. One is this kind of thinking that we're doing and talking out loud and actually applying our anatomy. But the second one is it helps you guys visualize where the muscles are. So it's kind of cool. And I honestly don't remember. I honestly don't remember. I made the test three, four years ago. But there's like a 90% chance that this exact picture is on that test. And it says, what is this? You know what I mean? It's that type of thing. And that's about 80% of the test. 80% of the test is just you better know your muscles, that kind of thing. You should have made this like Jeopardy. Yeah, um, I used to have a Jeopardy. Anyway, never mind. All right, all right. Thank you, Miss McDowell. That was a really great example. Um, it is also okay if you don't know these answers. So, Miss Estes, let's stop that yawning and answer this. No, I'm kidding. I don't, I don't mind at all. But I just meant like I caught you in mid yawn. So, like, like what muscle do you think this is, ma'am? And it's okay to ask. Well. That. Yeah. I'm going to say, because it does go all the way up, 
it's going to be the longissimus. Yeah, it goes all the way up, and it grabs onto some ribs still. So, yeah. So I'm still thinking longissimus, and I like your thing. And they all kind of insert down the back, so that's kind of hard to say, because it depends how the book describes, right? Does it go to the thoroclum or aponeuroses or whatever? But anyway, I like your guess, too. Um, does anybody disagree with her, by the way? We can have lively debate. Oh, oh snap! Yes, Mr. Tate. Um, okay. I think this is the, <clears throat> the one that starts with the, with the S, the spinalis, is that it? Spinalis, but, but, but I mean, I like what you're saying, but I feel like it's not quite close enough to the spine, and I don't think the spinalis runs all the way up to the back of the head. I'm done. Do, I'm not sure, dude. Let's find out. And by the way, though, I love what Mr. Tate did, though. He wasn't afraid to speak up, and, and he had a very legitimate argument. I will agree. Do we all agree that it's got to be one of those two? It's got to be spinalis or longissimus. So it was not stupid what you said, sir. It was right on. Um, Thank, you. Thank you. Yes. Unfortunately, women are usually right. So, yeah. <laughs> Bam. Um, we had a fighting chance. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> right. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Blige, yes, sir. So is that guy's hand directly on the spine? Or yeah. I, I think, think that's it's, probably why it's a little confusing. It is. And none of this is perfect. I, um... I think his hands are on the spinous processes. Yeah. But by the way, this isn't perfect, and this isn't his real longissimus, right? This is an overlay on a slide to try to teach us something. What I love was what I loved Ms. Estes's rationale and Mr. Tate's rationale because they were based in, like, you had to know your anatomy to even have that discussion. So it was great. But yeah, sir, I, I agree with you. It's a little confusing. And many of these slides are. <laughs> Uh, by the way, on the multiple choice test, though, we were very careful not to give you, like, things that were a matter of opinion about the slide. Does that make sense? Like, we wouldn't put in something where we're like, eh, it could be that. We wanted you to, if you knew the muscle, you'd get it right. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I just heard weird stuff coming from there, sir. I never know what you're up to. You're always smiling like you're up to something. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, now this muscle, Mr. Blygen, I'm going to have you answer this one, sir. They, I want to warn you, though, they're doing something that I don't like in a way. They're showing you half of the lower section of this muscle and half of the upper section. So they're missing the right-hand side of the cervical portion and the left-hand side of the thoracic and lumbar portion because they're just trying to show you how the muscle curves. I don't know what they're trying to do. But this is, in a way, only half of the lower part and half the upper part, and they switch sides. So what muscle is this, though, sir? Spinalis. Spinalis. Why do you think that? Um, because it looks like his hand is more like right on the spine yeah. than it was on the last slide. So, yeah. um, and the spinalis is connected directly to the spine, the the sides of the spine. The spinous so, processes. Uh, spinous the processes. Process. Not transverse spinous. Yeah, right here. Yeah, good. Let's see if you're right, sir. Spinalis. Nicely done. Nicely, nicely done. Mr. Placencia, whatever this next muscle is, it's yours. Trapezius. I hope you're right on this one. Look how beautiful that is, everybody. Do we see the upper, middle, and lower fibers? Yeah. Sir, what are the actions of that muscle? Uh, the upper fibers will elevate the scapula and also um, inwardly rotate them. Yeah, I think you're right there, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, up, inwardly, upwardly, upwardly rotate. Yeah, upwardly, upwardly rotate. Upwardly, upwardly. <laughs> inwardly, upwardly. I bought it though. I was going along with the ride. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Absolutely. Upward. Mid yeah. Go ahead. Middle fibers will adduct the scapula or retract the scapula. Nicely said. And then the lower fibers will depress the scapula or um, downwardly rotate. Yeah. Well, they. I think so. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, downward rotate, yeah. I don't memorize those either. Um, can it have any effect on the neck, the upper fibers? Yes. Bilaterally, what would they do? Um, okay, bilaterally, hold. Bilaterally, it would, uh, what is that called? Is that extending or flexing? That'd be ex extend the neck. Yes, because it happened behind you. Sir, you never fail to impress. So. Yes, extend by the, and unilaterally it would cause you to turn your head. I don't care if it turns to the same side or whatever. The point is it causes you to turn your head. Cool. All right. 
Thank you. That was well done. Mr. Blige, can you still have your hand up? Did you have a question about the trapezius? Do you remember the trapezius, sir? Just teasing, sir. Okay, we're good? No? Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thank, thanks, sir. Ms. Marez. Yes, Michael. Ms. Marez. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I like this one. Hold on. Because I think this is, I think this is the whole erector spinae group. Yeah, it's the whole group kind of shown together for part of the back, too, which is kind of annoying. Hold on. Miss Modest, what is this muscle? Is that the levator spatula? Is that the uh, levator spinella? I mean, Leva excuse me. Levator scapula is a good yeah. guess because you're up in the kind of the right area, but mm -hmm. that's posterior. This is anterior. This muscle's like here. Oh, it's in the front. That's right. It's look, here, look where um, it's look where it's hooking to. Because it looks to me like it's going for the sternum, yeah. and the clavicle up to the mastoid process. I'm clueless. I'm gonna lie. I'm clueless. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's okay. You don't have to lie. But what should we name a muscle if it goes to the sternum, clavicle, mastoid process? What if you just put all those together in one word? I'm not sure. Okay. Stur By the way, it's not one that we've studied yet, so don't feel bad. Sternal, clidal, mastoid. Okay. Sternal, clidal, SCM. Do not feel bad, Ms. Modest. This is not even in what oh, we covered no. yet. Okay. That's why I'm here. Good. Thank you. Well, and we haven't even done sternal, clidal, mastoid. I've only mentioned it in passing. But I left it in here because I was like, eh, you never know. Okay. Sternal, clidal, mastoid. SCM, by the way, is how most therapists say it, but I like you guys to say the whole thing in this class. It is also nicknamed every... Actually, Miss Martis, you'll love this. You know what the sternocleidal mastoid is nicknamed? What is that? Well, if it, if it, if, if it bilaterally contracted, mm -hmm. it would cause me to do a flexion of my neck. And it is called the prayer muscle. Oh, okay. Because it bends your head down in prayer. The prayer muscle. Yes. No. Blessings to you. Yes. Another example of it there. Yes. Okay. I just threw the carotid artery in here to show you guys. Don't worry about rubbing the carotid artery. Just worry about blocking it on both sides and holding it for a while because then after a while the person might pass out. Uh, but you can rub here all day long. Things strong. Yeah, don't worry. Miss Trotter, whatever the next muscle is, it's yours. I just want to give you a heads up, give you plenty of time to get really nervous. Okay? And it's not named after a Star Wars character. Whatever this muscle is. I don't know what it is, but I'm guaranteeing what is that muscle, Miss Trotter? The bicep brachii. The what? The muscle in red. It's on the slide. Yeah, biceps. Right? This. I'm making a guess. I don't know. I, I want you to guess again because this is the bicep down here. <laughs> what is this muscle? His shoulder muscle right here. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the biceps, but you're right, by the way, we're on the arm. You are not far. This nice thing with a vein running down in here on this ripping gentleman's arm is the bicep brachii. What is this upside down triangular muscle up here? Oh, triceps, right? Am I still wrong? Oh, wait, 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 this should be easy. Why is this not coming to me? Because, because you're in front of a whole bunch of people and you've never seen this picture before and it was, it was too easy. If I tell you, you're going to be upset now. Yeah. <laughs> so the bicep is in front, anterior, the triceps in back. What's this muscle here over my shoulder right here? Not here. Not here. Here. Upside down triangle. Has an anterior, middle, and posterior portion. Oh, the deltoid. Yeah! The deltoid! <laughs> cool. All right, Ms. Trotter, you can redeem yourself, so still. You can redeem yourself by telling me some of the actions, not even all of them, but just some of the actions of the deltoids. Um, and look at the see. picture, kind of. The picture can kind of help you, kind of. Yeah. I know it, um, it's adducts, right? Uh, a, it a, a, B ducts? Yeah, A, B ducts. Yeah. yeah, the middle fibers, if not all of them, maybe all of them, but the middle fibers definitely A, B duct. Cool. Yeah. What do the anterior fibers do? 
do they like barely rotate? Or? Um, they immediately rotate. Immediately rotate. Yeah, and they also and then, um, flex flexation. <laughs> flex, yeah, flexation. A uh, flexion, a flexion. Flexi yeah, and then what do the rear fibers do? Um. Uh, Lateral, oh, no, um, well, extension. Yes, and lateral rotation, you were right. Thank lateral. you, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, you poor thing. All right, good job, though. Deltoid. Uh, Miss Vincent. Hi. Miss Vincent, I don't know what the next muscle is, but you're going to get it. Let's see. Uh, that's deltoid pectoral groove. That's not a big deal. I mean, it is a big deal, but... Uh, Miss Vincent, this is half a muscle. What muscle is it? Looks like a trap. Yeah, it trap. is. Trap. Trap. Trapezius. <laughs> yeah, that one. Trapezius. Stick on the line, though. We're going to have to ask you one more because I think that was too easy for you. Boom. Okay, now this is tricky because they're actually showing you several muscles here. What do you suppose the muscle in red is? And we have studied it. Doesn't mean you should know it. That's totally cool. This is just massage 101 here. But it is the largest muscle in your upper body. It is found on the back and laterally. Kind of a lateral back muscle. Latissimus dorsi. Ah. Just, I just go to the gym a lot. I, I <laughs> that was good, though. It is your latissimus dorsi. It's the wings behind your back. Yeah, it's the most beautiful upper body muscle. Good. So you're feeling it in your latissimus dorsi. Anytime I say latissimus dorsi, you say what, Miss Vincent? Um, Terrace major. Yes, you do. Thank you. Um, and after, I bet you after a back day, your lats are sore, but I bet you're even more sore, like right up in there, because that little uh, Terry's major gets really tired. Yeah. So you probably felt it. Thank you very much. Miss Lobitz? Miss Lobitz. Hi, Miss Lobitz. Whatever the next Hi. muscle is. Um, it's yours. Let's see. Oh, what's this muscle? Miss Lovitz, this is not easy. Mm. Don't blow it. Everybody's watching. One of the Terry's? Did you say one of the Terry's? Yeah. All right. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> it is one of the Terry's. Sorry, I don't want to throw you off. I love her logic. So the Terry's kind of live on the lateral border of the scapula. And she can see the inferior angle. It's kind of down there by that guy's ring finger. That's the inferior angle. So she knows she's on the lateral border over there where the guy's pointing with his other finger. Um, so picking that it is, and I love what you said, it's one of the Terry's because they both hang out on the lateral border. You're 100% right. It is one of the Terry's. Which? Major. What? Major. Terry's major. And so why do you think it's the Terry's major as opposed to the Terry's minor? Because I... I think the Terry's minor is thinner. I right. Yeah. Also, the Terry's major likes to attach to the lateral border starting at the inferior angle. Mm -hmm. Does this muscle look like it starts at the inferior angle of the scapula on the lateral border? Yes. It does. Yeah. And, by the way, minors tend, not always, but minors tend to like to be on top of the shoulders of the major, so minor would probably be higher up. So I think your, your guess at Terry's major is a good one. And so does the slide. Wow. Excellent. Pretty good for a bunch of freshmen. I like it. Good. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Miss Sarno. Hi, Miss Sarno. Oh, boy. I'm excited. Okay. Hold on. Miss Sarno. What are these two muscles? Two muscles. Uh, two muscles. Uh, major and tendon minor. You're right. You're right. She's right. Terry's major and Terry's minor. Which one is more superior? Uh, tendon uh, minor. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Sarno. That's 100% right. Terry's major's on the bottom, Terry's minor's on top. Yeah, very impressive. <laughs> All right. Miss Walker, why? Miss Walker. Miss Walker, why? 
No. No, Miss Walker. No, last day of class. You can't be asleep. Miss Walker. All right, Miss Walker, I'll give you a minute. I hope you're going to the bathroom or something. All right. Miss Munoz. Miss Munoz? I'm here. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, Miss Munoz, what muscle is this? Oh, gosh. I know. Um, I know. The pressure is unbelievable. Is that infraspinatus? So why do you think it's infraspinatus? Because I'm looking at my book. <laughs> All right, I love it. It's below the spine of the scapula, though, too, right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it is the infraspinatus. Yeah, I just want to hear you. I love your honesty. Thank you. You're like, because I'm cheating? <laughs> no, that's awesome. All right, thank you, Miss Munoz. It's the infra Anytime I say infraspinatus, Miss Munoz, you say what? Terry's mine. Thank you, ma'am. It's been a pleasure. All right. Uh, Mr. Brown. Hey, buddy. Hey, Mr. Brown. Um, what are, well, probably should tell me what both these muscles are. They might just be talking about the one in red, but what are both these muscles? The one in red. Okay. Okay, so that's still the scapulas. The super is up there. Infraspinatus is right there. Subscapularis would be below. That would be the teres minor, no? So if that's the teres minor, I love your logic, sir. I love how you explain the supraspinatus would be above. The subscapularis, we can't even see. It's underneath. I love it. So if that's the, if the red muscle is the teres minor, what's the grayish muscle above it? Um, the tissimus dorsa, no. Your logic was right. I think you I think you know what this muscle is. I'm hoping I didn't throw you off. Because you said it when you were going through your stuff. So the red muscle is the teres minor, which means anytime I say teres minor, you say the that's the infraspinatus. Yes. Infraspinatus and teres minor. Good job, sir. Nice thinking. I love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good stuff. All right, Miss Hawks. Miss Hawks. This is not easy because it's very hard to show three-dimensional muscles, all right? But what they are showing you is a muscle that's actually on the underside of the scapula because you can't really see it from the back side, right? It's under, so they're saying if you lift up somebody's arm and you push into their scapula, this is the muscle you would hit. It's a muscle found under the scapula. The subscapularis. Oh! Uh, yes, hopefully, I, I love that you said that, and I hope you said it just based on the fact that I said a muscle found underneath the scapula. This, yeah. is, this is how you guys access the subscapularis, actually, is through the front, and it can be done. The only thing I do is I put a sheet over my hand before I do it, and not because armpits are gross. I do it because, for some reason, the, finger, the, the sheet over my hand makes it less, I don't know, bitey to the person when I go digging in there. Anyway, but yeah, subscapularis, well done. Thank you, Miss Hawks. Beautifully done. Not an easy one to identify. Yes. Cool. Miss Allure? Yes. Miss Allure, what is this muscle? I would say it's on top. Super um <laughs> Super D duper. <laughs> super spinatus. Is that it? And why do you think it's the super spinatus? Because it's on the top. Of the spine of the scapula? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for being right, <laughs> Miss Allure. Yeah, it's on the top of the scapula. Yep. And it sneaks out under the acromion process. Do you guys see that? It hides on the acromion process and it comes, pops back out on the head of the humerus over there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you actually couldn't see it because there'd be a trapezius over it, but still, that's the muscle. Really well done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Miss Suriel. Miss Suriel. 
what is this muscle? We may have already had it. Is one of the um, um, yes, it is one of them. <laughs> is it the, the minor? And why do you think it's the Terry's minor? Terry's minor. Yes, but why not the major? Because the major is a, is smaller and it's a top, almost on top of the scapula, like a superficial. No, 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 no. Like, no, the major attaches kind of the same place this one does, but the major is lower. It's down on the, the inferior angle of the scapula. So this is the minor. This is the minor. You're right. Terry's minor. Yeah. We'll see major in a second. I'll show you. I'll show you. You're right. Mr. Riedel. Oh my gosh. Mr. Riedel, we're going to, hey. hold on. We're going to pass this up because it's, yeah, it's hard to tell it. Okay. Mr. Riedel, what is this muscle, sir? Is it the rhomboids? Uh, yes, it is. And it's the rhomboids major and minor. That's the rhomboids. Good job, sir. Thank you. Ms. Routson? Yes, sir. Ms. Routson, uh, well, what's this muscle? But I'm going to give you another one. Mm -hmm. That's the trapezius. Yes, that's what I'm going to give you another What is this muscle, Ms. Routson, this adorable little muscle here? That's adorable of you to ask me the one muscle I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's pretty, if it's the one you don't know, that's pretty good. So we only got one so far. That's good. I like she gets really close. Is that right? Sorry. Uh, I don't mind. Perhaps that is the levator scapula. So what makes you think that it's perhaps the levator scapula as opposed to like um, the gastrocnemius or the adductor magnus or I'm teasing. What, oh. what makes you think it's the levator scapula? Well, most definitely the uh, attachments because it's at the kind of like the superior angle of the scapula and then it's going up the neck. Yeah, she nailed it, by the way. She said all the right stuff. It attaches to the medial border, just like the rhomboids do, but it attaches to the most superior portion of the medial border all the way up to the superior angle of the scapula, which is exactly what the levator scapula does. And it goes into the side of the neck here to be very precise transverse processes one, two, three, and four, which we can't tell from this picture, but it looks close enough. And it looks like it could levate a scapula, doesn't it? If it contracted, it could lift up a scapula. Uh, hopefully she's right after everything we just said. Yeah, levator scapula. Don't worry about it saying prone there. It just means the guy's laying down. Really nicely done. Thank you. Mr. Tate. Yes, Chef Mr. Tate. What? I'm going to ask you another one, but what is this muscle right now? The trapezius. Yeah, I don't really like this picture, but it's trapezius. All right, sir, this one's not easy. What muscle is this with the red finger-like projections coming there? The serratus anterior. What makes you think it's the serratus anterior? Because it is. Um, because it's um, serrated, right? Saw-like. Does that look saw-like? I love that answer. Does it look like it might attach to the first eight or nine ribs? Might. Yes. Does it look like it's coming out from behind the scapula because it might be attached to the medial border on the anterior side and wrapping around? Might be. I don't know. You sure you don't want to change that answer, sir? No, sir. Good. Yeah. Don't change it. Yeah. Serratus anterior. Very well done. Very well done. Not easy to do. Thank you very much, sir. Miss Jong. Hi, Miss Jong. Yeah. Hi. Miss Jong. What muscle is this? <laughs> I'm glad you got it too, because we've talked about it. <laughs> what? Please pardon. It. So, what what muscle is this? What's its name? In the slide, it's the muscle right here. What's this muscle? Um, major. Yes. Pectoralis major! Yeah! And the crowd goes wild! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.
Yes, back to Alice Major. I love this picture. Can you guys see how the fibers cross over going to the arm? The upper fibers actually go down lower. The lower fibers actually cross up on the arm. Look on the arm. You'll see it. Very cool. Pectoralis major. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. All right. Okay. Miss Walker T. Yes. <laughs> Miss Walker. Oh, hold on. Miss Walker T. What is. Oh. Well, that kind of takes the fun away. What is this muscle? But I'm going to give you another one since I gave you the name of this one. What's this muscle? Well, then I better get it. Hopefully, I get it right then, huh? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I think it's the pector. <clears throat> excuse me, the pectoralis minor. Yeah, I don't know why. Anyway, let's see if we got another one for you. Pectoralis minor. Boom. Do you see what he's showing you here, by the way? You can actually grab the pectoralis major and minor like this. I do it all the time. In fact, uh, Mr. Brown and Mr. Blige, and that thing I was doing where I was pulling your bicep through your ha my hand, you can do it here too. And that's good fun. Let me tell you. Grab your partner next time and pull their pec through your hand. They'll love you. They'll never forget it. Yeah. Anyway, do it. It's very powerful. You've got to be careful. But uh, not because you're going to... But I meant, like, it can be sensitive. But it's not dangerous. It's a very effective way to get to the pecs. And on women, I love it because, because women have breasts. And I can pull your pec to me instead of being in the way of your, your breast. So when I put my hand here, I'm pulling your pec to me and not having to worry about uh, violating you at all. So it's kind of a cool little thing. And I'll come in the lab and show it to you guys. But anyway, don't be afraid to grab stuff and pull muscles through it. Yeah, strip them out. I didn't hit them. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, okay. Here we go, Miss Walker. You can name this one. Miss Trotter would like to name this one, but you get to name it. <laughs> that is the biceps brachii. Brachi. It is. What makes you think it's the biceps brachii? Uh, because it has two heads in the... Brachii region. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Two-headed muscle in the brachii region. Hopefully, it's biceps brachii. I love it. Cool. Let's find out. Okay. Good. Thank you, Miss Carodi. Hi. Yes, I'm here. Okay, Miss Carodi. Do you know what muscle this is? We have we've talked about it, but not a lot. So it's okay if you don't know. So I love that you're, you're saying biceps brachii, right? Yes. So look at this muscle. That's biceps brachii. This muscle is found underneath it. Brachialis. Yes! It's the brachialis. It's not even in chapter two of your guy's book. I threw it in there. It's really thrown in with forearm muscles. But anyway, it is the brachialis found underneath the biceps brachii. Can you guys see that all it can do all day long is help you flex your elbow? That's all it can do. It's very simple, hardworking muscle. It doesn't ask for anything. It doesn't get any big awards. Everybody always talks about the biceps. Oh, that guy's got great, great biceps, whatever. Brachialis are there just making them big, working really hard, doing all that stuff. Thank you, Miss Crody. Well done. Um, Miss Walker... Why? Please tell me you're there, Miss Walker. Miss Walker, why? She's so cute. She gets so sleepy. This picture, she's probably like, ah, drool coming down her mouth. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see. Okay. Uh, where did we start? Oh, we started with Miss McDowell. Didn't we? Miss McDowell, what muscle is this? Sorry, Miss Trotter. This was your other. Oh. I'm gonna say that that is the triceps brachii. But I don't see three heads, I only see two. Well, one of them hides under the um, short head. It's the medial head, it's higher. So the long head goes across and attaches to the scapula, and the medial head is hidden, 
and the lateral head is, is hiding it. Yeah, really nicely done. I hope we're both right, but that was really good. Triceps brachii, thank you. Cool, 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 very nice. Um, can I ask a question? I think that this would be an excellent time <laughs> for you to ask a question. So, it's not about any of the muscles that we've covered, um, but I just kind of had a random thought um, earlier. So you know how you're saying like, like flexion of the knee is the only one that goes um, backwards instead of forwards? That I can think of. Um, what about people who like they, they don't, you know, like their knees are messed up and they, they, they go forward with the thing to walk instead of like bending it backwards? You're talking about, let me make sure I know what you're talking about, but you're talking about an extreme birth defect, right? Where their knees are actually I, I, think, I think that that's yeah. why it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a very extreme birth defect. You don't see it in this country because it's it can be easily corrected, I guess, by surgery and stuff. But you'll see it in countries where they don't have access to things like that. Um, and so, are you going to ask me is that a flexion or extension in that case? Yeah. Like, what what would that be? Because for them to walk forward, they have to to move their their knee forward instead of you know. I'm not laughing at the people. I'm laughing because only you, Ms. McDowell, only you could find an unanswerable question for me on the last day of class. Now, I don't know. Like, I don't know what doctors do if they flip that and they say, well, gosh, the knees flipped, so we're going to call this a flexion, or I just don't know. I don't know. I guess it would depend on, on what flipped the knee. If it's flipped at the hip, then they call, I don't, I just don't know. I don't know. You're going to have to research that over spring break and come back and tell us. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, because I, um... By the way, I do know there's a lot of... I saw a girl who, who walked like that when I was in high school, and I, and I didn't want to say anything, because it would no. probably make her feel bad, but she, no. yeah, she... I saw scared. somebody like this, too, um, on a documentary and stuff, who was trying to get surgery to correct it, um, but I don't know how they describe the movement. I also know that lots of animals do have knees that work the opposite way. So, lots of birds and things like that, their knees bend backwards, um... So, but anyway, I just don't know if they refer to it as a flexion still or not. Okay. My guess is that if it bends in front, they would then call it a flexion in front because the angle is closing. And flexions are usually about this angle closing. In the leg, it's quite obvious when that angle is closing or not. Right? My knee is either closing in or not. And so it doesn't matter which direction it's going. You can tell when a knee is closing or not. And so my guess is if their leg bends backwards, we would flip flexion and extension. Okay. Yes. It's a very interesting mind you got there, young lady. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That was good. <laughs> oh, sheesh. Okay. Uh, Mr. Placencia. Mr. Placencia, what is this strange, random little muscle that we haven't talked about very much that I'm throwing your way right now, sir? Uh, we briefly talked about it. It was like the caraco something. I can't remember. The it, attached to the, it attached to the caracoid process of scapula. Yeah. And that's in the name, but I can't remember the name. And it goes over to what region of the body? To the, to the humerus. Yes, but what do we call that region? You're right, it's the humerus. What do we call the region? What do we call this? Oh, the brachial region. Yeah. So what happens if you put those two things together? Caracobrachii, something like that? That's pretty much it. Coracobrachialis. Coracobrachialis. It attaches the coracoid process to the to the, uh, the brachialis, to the middle of your humerus. Yeah. And it can help with things like everybody, like a flexion or a horizontal adduction to pull in your arm. Mm -hmm. Good job, sir. Um, I really like what you did, sir, <laughs> because it's kind of the secret to life, right? You don't actually have to always know the entire answer. You just have to be smart enough to be like, well, I know that thing goes to the coracoid process and that's kind of in the name and you know what I mean? You can, you can work through a lot of stuff that way. Well done. Really well done. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, Miss Estes. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, you saw my face on that one. Yeah. Now remember, they're not talking they're talking about the muscle in red and it is on the anterior arm but it's not the most superior muscle they're talking about the muscle in red and if you need help 
you should call on Miss Karoti because she could tell you what this muscle is. Did she just answer it she, earlier? She might have. She might have identified it from a different angle. So the, the break, brachialis. Then. And if I asked you how you figured that out, you'd say, because I remember what she said earlier. <laughs> well, yeah, it's kind of hiding under there, though. I didn't know you could see it. Yeah. What they're trying to show you here is we're trying to instill in your guys' heads that I'm, I'm poking the biceps brachii here, but the brachialis is right underneath here. We want you to know you can reach it. It's under here. They tend to kind of feel like one muscle, but it's under there. Cool. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you, Miss Crody. I feel like she was a major help in that answer. Cool. Okay. All right. That's that.